Could you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Oh, hello, neighbor. <laughs> it's me, Eric, your friendly uh, American expat, British wannabe, uh, book loving, uh, tea drinking, um, <laughs> friendly neighbor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, um, it's really chilly in London today, uh, so I thought it would be fun to do a book haul video, and I have lots of books to talk about. Um, I've got all these books that I got for Christmas as presents and that I bought myself in January, and then I have all these other books which um, publishers have kindly sent me and that I want to chat about. So I thought I'd just go through them all briefly and talk to you about them, because um, it'd just be a fun thing to do on a cold winter morning. So I'm gonna start um, talking about this novel called Temporary People by Deepak Unakrishnan. Uh, this was given to me as a Christmas present by my friend Christy, uh, who I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I think the, the novel is about sort of displacement and repatriation around the United Arab Emirates. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a, it's, it, it made some like best of lists last year um, and sounded really, like a really like timely, fascinating book. Uh, so, uh, so yes, my friend Christy gave this to me for Christmas. Uh, and Christy is a friend of mine who I've been friends with her since we were teenagers. She's, she's one of my oldest friends that I'm still in contact with. And I just, I love her so much. We just like, we, we just like, we've always connected so strongly and we've both always had such a passion for books. And uh, we still like just chat about books all the time. And you know, like she's one of these wonderful friends in high school that like we, um, we, we had like gym class together and neither of us were very sporty. So we would like try to get out of, like they would try to do team sports in gym class. We had this horrible gym teacher who made us do team sports. Uh, but we're, we aren't team sports kind of people. Um, so we like finagled, we convinced him to let us just go to this exercise room off in the corner uh, where there were, um, what are those things called? Like bicycles that don't actually go anywhere where you just sit on these bicycles and and cycle, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. There's a word for that, isn't there? <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, I don't, I don't, um, I'm not a big gym person. <laughs> and um, so we would just go off together to this exercise room and we would just sit on these bicycles, not bicycling, and just chat to each other um, while everybody else played these team sports. And like, um, it was actually quite nice of our gym teacher to, to let us skip out on the team sports that way, because um, yeah, clearly we didn't want to play. Anyway, that that that's um that's a real tangent. But uh, but yeah, we we always send each other um, books for like birthdays and Christmas. Um, so I I love that she sent me this, and uh, and it's really lovely actually because I don't actually get given many books around Christmas time or like for my birthday or anything, um, because everyone. Most people in my life just assume that like I already have loads of books, so why would I need more books? But of course I want more books. I always want more books. Um, I can never have enough, and so I love being given books. Um, but so yeah, I was given that book, and then another book I was given for Christmas, this very like special edition of the illustrated letters of Virginia Woolf. It's this beautiful, it's this beautiful edition, and it has her letters um, interspersed with uh, paintings and photographs of the Bloomsbury group of um, the particular people she's talking about um, when she's uh, writing these letters or receiving these letters. Um, so there's people like Vanessa Bell, her sister, um, paintings of her, and uh, Vita Sackwell West. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a really lovely, gorgeous edition that I, I, I had never seen before and was so surprised by and just, yeah, so happy to get this. And then I also got this book, uh, Baking with Kafka, with um, comics by Tom Gould, 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 not Gould. Uh, and these, um, uh, these, these, are, these are really fun. Uh, these are comics specifically all around like the reading life and like poking, uh, loving fun at the reading life um, in, in quite a cool way. So um, I'm enjoying just like flipping through these. So that was another really cool, book present to get. And then the final book that I got for Christmas, um, that I got in my stocking, was 
Kazu Ishiguro's uh, Nobel Prize speech um, that he gave. Uh, and I, I read this over Christmas. I forgot to talk about this um, in my December uh, wrap up. Uh, but um, this is all about, uh, he, he gives this wonderful, like very um, straightforward, like personable summary of his writing life and the development of his writing life and particularly as a man who was born in Japan, uh, but since he was a baby grew up in England. And so the, this duality of feeling completely English, but then having this Japanese heritage. And it's more about how his conception of Japan uh, just grew from what he knew in his family life because he, he didn't know the, the actual real Japan. And so Japan became this sort of like mythical type place for him, um, this, this place of the, the imagination or this very, um, uh, this, this place of remembrance um, for his family and, and how that like impacted his imagination and his writing life. Uh, so, and obviously he's, he's a brilliant writer um, that I talked about before, like recently. And yeah, I just loved how like relatable and down to earth this, this speech was and, and was so, so happy that he won the Nobel Prize. Uh, so that was great. Uh, then the, I went on a bit of a bookshop. I, I talked about how um, to like sort of beat the January blues. I've um, been buying some books and especially books that people have been talking about as their favorite books of last year or like from recommendations I've been getting from um, booktubers. Um, so like one of, one of the um, uh, listed on like lots of people's lists of best book of the year was this book of short stories called Atrib by Ellie Williams. And uh, I, um, yeah, this, this has been on lots of people's book lists. And I think these are just sort of like weird um, experimental stories that give like a different perspective on everyday life. And it's a debut collection of short stories. And uh, yeah, I'm just really eager to like plunge in and discover uh, what uh, this new writer's writing is like. Then I picked up the novel uh, Please Look After Mom by Kyun Suk Shin and uh, Matthew Sharapa talked about this author on his channel recently. I mean he, he talks about her quite a lot um, as one of her, his favorite authors but he uh, finally made a whole video about this author recently. Uh, this really great fascinating uh, video talking all about this um, author's life and the various works of hers that have been translated into English. Uh, this is all about a mother who goes missing and the, the family who try to find her and the discoveries they make about her, um, things that they didn't know about her life. Uh, this has been a very like popular best-selling novel um, and uh, it sounds really good and I love how it's this it's this tiny this like tiny tiny version that I can just like carry around in my pocket so so that's really cool and then I bought this um, anthology called Not Here a queer anthology of loneliness and I love works especially like non-fiction works that explore the theme of loneliness like my whole book blog is called Lonesome Reader. Um, I just think the state of loneliness is like a really curious, interesting state that um, that a lot of us experience in our lives and, and is worth exploring. And particularly um, in association with uh, queer identity, like it's it's um, really interesting to to think about and explore. And I wanted to get this specifically because um, the it has an essay in it by Olivia Lane, uh, who wrote the fantastic nonfiction book, The Lonely City. And um, But uh, this is the, the first book um, from a new press called Pilot Press, started by a um, artist and writer called Richard Dowell. And uh, it also has an essay in it from uh, David Hoyle, who if you ever go on the sort of uh, gay pub scene in London, and uh, go to see a drag show, um, you'll probably have seen David Hoyle because David Hoyle is um, a, a performance artist and sort of drag, like um, gender, gender fuck um, drag artist uh, who has performed for many years and in lots of different clubs. And uh, yeah, he's just very prolific and around a lot, um, but it also includes photography and artwork and um, yeah, it just, it, it sounds really good. So um, so yeah, I, I bought a copy of this and then I got a poetry collection called Inside the Wave by Helen Dunmore. This won the Costa Book Award in the poetry category um, this, uh, the, this past prize um, that 
that went and uh, and Helen Dunmore sadly died last year and this poetry collection is all about the the process of aging and contemplations about the the process of dying uh, so uh, and I was particularly drawn to reading this because like my favorite novel of all time is Virginia Woolf's The Waves and the um, the title of this is Inside the Wave and, and I read that poem um, which sort of like contemplates like the the um, the flow of life um, and in parallel with the the movement of waves and and I just love how that the, the imagery, the constant pounding of waves is reflective of the, the unceasing motion and changing of life. And I'm starting to sound really wanky, so I'm not gonna talk about this anymore and move on to the next book that I bought for myself, which is Bruce Chatwin's On the Black Hill. And I bought this after I uh, made my, my video about um, my, my, my reading goals for 2018. And I talked about how, um, you know, I wanna read a book each month from um, from this book, the the Modern Library's 200 best books um, since 1950, and uh, this is one of those books um, that I'd never heard of before. But on the comments to that video, Mercedes um, commented uh, how she was reading this book at the time and um, enjoying it, and so uh, I thought I would take the plunge and like why not start with a book that I'd never heard of, and uh, this is a novel about twins um, living on an isolated farm and that sounds like a really intriguing story so I'm uh, eager to read this and then oop, books are starting to fall down uh, so um, books that I've been sent by publishers um, that, that sound really good to me and that I'd really like to read um, the first is a book that I'm actually halfway through and it's David Seabrook's um, All the Devils Are Here this is actually a reprint of this nonfiction book um, which came out I'm not sure when it was first published but David Seabrook died in 2009 I think he was he was an odd um, sort of writer like I I'm, I'm halfway through and I don't really know how to categorize his writing it's nonfiction like personal memoirist nonfiction where he talks about these coastal English towns which are sort of dilapidated used to be sort of like um, locations for holiday makers and stuff uh, but um, he, he gets into all the sort of seedy details of them um, talking about a uh, like murder who then who like killed his father and but then became a very prolific artist while he was living in a mental institution and he he goes into um, the life of Charles Dickens and and um, particularly how Charles Dickens um, final Un unfinished novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, um, how he has this whole theory about um, what might have happened to Edwin Drood, the character in this story, and, and what might have been Charles Dickens' ins inspiration um, for, for this story. And yeah, it like, but so he'll like talk about these accounts of these people and things and places, but then like sometimes it gets very like personal, like, like, it, he records how he's actually walking through these villages and encountering people and and he and he seems very skittish and and um and and very self-conscious and and so it's it's um it's kind of moving in a way because you don't really know much about him but you get his feeling of, as this observer um uh, who who sees beyond the the superficialities of these coastal communities and so uh, yeah but also I just love the feel of this book like this book is so sexy I mean look at the the cover of it but also the the texture and feel of it is like really almost like velvety and soft and it has like French flaps um, so you know just like very sexy book if this book was a person I would chat it up and um, invite it out for a drink uh, just because I think it's really sexy so yeah, so I'm reading this, I'm going to finish it. Then I'm very excited about this novel called Kintu by uh, Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. And this is a debut novel, I believe. And a lot of people, I think, are sort of comparing this novel to Yagyase's novel Homegoing um, because it's uh, about an African family and multiple generations of an African family. And so uh, this takes place in Uganda. I think it begins in like 1750, where um, a man has a, a curse placed upon his family and then you follow succeeding generations of the family and how this curse plays out. 
in the different um, succeeding members of um, his family's life. And yeah, sounds like a, a good, like, epic story um, that I'm really eager to read. And there's uh, this novel called Walking Wounded, Walking Wounded, by uh, Sheila Llewellyn. Uh, this takes place in a mental hospital in Britain after World War II and is about the, the life of, I think, a traumatized soldier and his psychiatrist. Um, sounds really good. I think, I think this is a debut novel as well. Um, it has high praise by Hilary Mantel. But yeah, I'm um, eager to read this. And then I have Joanna Cannon's new novel, Three Things About Elsie. Um, this has been um, uh, talked about in a lot of places and um, particularly it's it's like flashy good um, to show the cover because it's the pattern of a Battenberg and if you don't um, if you don't live in England or have never seen a Battenberg before Battenberg is a cake um, that has this checkered structure and marzipan in between the layers of cake it's so good really delicious and <laughs> I was given um, this, uh, this limited edition proof copy, um, very excitingly. And I believe it's about the life of an elderly woman um, reflecting back on her life. And I, I think there should be more novels written from the perspective of elderly woman because I, I love novels that, like that. And, and I think that, um, you know, it's a, it's a really good perspective to, to have. And I do want to read this novel. I, I think it'll be good. Uh, but I sort of feel the same way that I think Sean the Book Maniac was talking about recently about how her first novel, um, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, how um, he really enjoyed reading it at the time and, and I really enjoyed reading it at the time, but it hasn't like stuck out in my memory as like, a hugely like like that was one of the best novels of the year like um, it was really good and like uh, especially the way it like looked at a community and the hidden lives of people in the community and how we interact with these people like quite a lot throughout our daily lives but we don't actually know what's going on in their lives and uh, so yeah she's really good at getting at that but yeah it's just one of those novels that don't like hugely stick out in my mind so um so so yeah I'm looking forward to getting through this I think it'll be a good sort of like comforting read like not that it'll be like necessarily easy but but you know um, it'll it'll just sort of be quite like an enjoyable book to get to so there's that and then there is this novel called um, Things We Nearly Knew by Jim Powell and this is about a couple who run a diner and the um, the wife did she go missing or or does she die uh, I'm not really sure uh, but then the, the husband sort of uncovers all these things about her life even though that they've um, been married and living and working together for 30 years um, he discovers all these things that he didn't know about her and so it asks that questions about like how well do you really know the people in your life um, the people that you believe that you're closest to so this sounds good and then there is um, you know January is sort of a month for like thrillers I think and and like murder mysteries and there's something about that like winter atmosphere that I think just like makes you want to read um, more that type of genre of book and I don't often read that type of genre of book um, but yeah it just I think it like compels you to do that and like I talked about recently of reading the the novel Lullaby um, how um, even though that's a very literary novel and not the sort of thriller that it, it makes itself out to be or the marketing makes it to, it out to be um, but, uh, but, but yeah, and so, um, so I have a couple kind of thriller type novels. There's this novel called Dark Pines by Will Dean and it's his debut novel. And it's sort of like a Scandi thriller. It takes place in uh, Sweden, in the forests of Sweden. And two hunters are found murdered. And it's uh, um, about the, the community that tries to explore and um, uncover what happened with these murders and whether it's connected with murders that happened at an earlier time. And yeah, I just think it's a really stylish looking um, book and uh, yeah, sounds like a good story. And then I have this other um, thriller called Fear by Dirk Kerbjewitt. And uh, this is a German, whoa, this is a German novel that was translated. And it's another sort of a murder mystery thriller um, that deals with neighbors and how well you know your neighbors. And it's sort of being marketed as like not your typical like thriller murder mystery type story because um, apparently the the mystery is pretty much already solved and more about the relationship of this um, father and son of a son who goes to visit his 
um, quite old father in prison and how a murder occurred because this family started to feel threatened by their neighbor. So yeah, this sounds like quite a good story to wrap myself up in during these cold, cold days. So um, there you go. Lots of books to get through in January, but um, but yeah, ones that I'm really excited about. But if um, you've read any of them, uh, let me know your thoughts about them. Um, or if you're like eager to read any of them, let me know which ones um, you think sound most interesting and which I should start with because there's a lot. Or let me know um, what else you've been reading that's that's good lately. Um, I just I love taking on people's recommendations and trying to to buy new books um, that I wouldn't have got otherwise. So thanks for watching and. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye, neighbor.